This is an example game called the Maze Game that can be used with your students while programming SNAP as a first introductory exercise. So all of the resources are available at this tiny URL uh, shown on the screen. So if you go to this uh, resource, you can find uh, several files that are contained within a zip called Maze Resources. These represent various uh, GIF files for uh, graphics and sound files as well. So the first phase is to set up the uh, various sprites and stages needed with those files. So you can see some screenshots here of those uh, particular uh, resources that we'll set up. So we'll begin, we'll set up the sprite first. So we have a file called Big Al. You can choose any other file you would like if you'd like to replace it with this. This is just a picture of an elephant. And um, so we set up the sprite and we set up the two um, sounds for the sprite. So there's the buzzer and clap. Then we move on to the stage area and the stage area has one sound called yay that will be at the end of the game and then it also has four separate costumes and these represent the four levels of the game. So the first three are actual mazes that you have to make it through as a player of the game and the third is a final kind of celebration stage that um, indicates the game is over. So the second step then is to program the script for the sprite. And you can see the blocks here on the slide and we'll walk through each of these and um, build them up together. So as we begin, we want to first create a new block and we'll make this block empty at first and use it and then we'll come back and finish and complete it. So we'll call this block move owl for moving the, uh, the sprite called big owl. We'll make this a motion block and the very first thing we want to do is just provide a parameter called direction that will be a number. And for now we'll punt and not define what this means. We'll just use it. This is like a practice of abstraction and we'll use it in our program and then we'll come back later and give the details. So when my program uh, begins when the uh, red, the green flag is clicked. I want to first point Al in the right direction so that he's um, moving to the right and then I set up the very specific locations on the screen so you can see I'm entering negative 218 and 160 uh, these may vary for your game depending on your resolution so just find those out and uh, be able to put those in. Then the next four things that we do is just simply defining what happens when the user clicks the four buttons uh, down arrow, up arrow, left arrow, and right arrow. So those four buttons indicate uh, how the user is moving to the screen and all that we're doing in that case is moving Big Al uh, to different places. So for up we're moving 180, uh, down we move, I'm sorry, for down we move 180, up we're moving uh, 0, and then we're going to move also to the left and to the right. So for the left arrow uh, we'll, ch we'll change this and move uh, this to 270 and then for the right arrow we will move 90. So this is just setting up the arrows. Um, whenever all, all we do with an arrow click is just call our, our uh, move owl block and we can fix that uh, coming up next and give more detail. So um, let's go ahead and do that now. Let's set up the move owl block and edit this back. So this is the earlier block that we created and at this point we need to do a few things. So we want to point Al into the specific direction that's indicated. That was the parameter that was passed back, the number 180, 0, 270, or 90. And that's being passed in as a parameter here so we have in the actual block uh, making Al point in that direction. And then we go ahead and perform the move. So after we move, after we point Al a move, uh, him in the right direction. We then have two things to check for. We have to see if he bumps into uh, one of the walls. So we have to check to see if he hits something black. And then we also have to check to see if he's finished this particular level by moving on top of something green. So we'll build this first this statement and it's a little bit tricky. So we have to grab over in the looks. There's a, um, a predicate returns touching and what you do is you just um, click on 
the color there right after the word touching and then you can move your mouse over a particular color that you would like to have selected so I just did that by picking one of the black areas of the maze and so if we are touching black that means we must have hit the wall and we need to reset the area so in this case we'll uh, force out to go back to the beginning of the maze and we'll play a buzzer sound indicating that we, we touch the sides so um, the second block is similar uh, the, I mean the next if statement in this case we click on the color there that was black and now I move over and select the green for the final position there and if we're touching the green we want to move out to the next level so there's a few things that we do uh, instead of playing the buzzer I'm going to play the clap I still want to move out to the beginning of the maze in this case will be the next maze the next level coming up and I'm going to do something like say um, I'm going to say the word next level so actually I have a I hit the wrong button here so I'm going to type in and say next level for two seconds this indicates that I've moved to the next level I'm then going to move out to the top left of the screen I'm going to play the sound clap there's one thing missing though I need to actually make the stage move to the next level so I'm going to do what's called a broadcast so a broadcast is kind of like shouting a message across your program and anyone who can read this and understand that particular message will, can then perform uh, an, a task associated with that so I'm going to broadcast a message called next level so once I've reached the green I'm going to broadcast that and then we'll come around and complete that in a moment so that's the whole move out block and this is the various stage, uh, blocks that, that move according to the arrow this third step then is we're going to write the script for the stage this is much simpler and we just have to do two things when the program begins and then what happens when a, a next level message is received let's first go out and save our project as maze game so just to be safe I'm going to save it both on the cloud and also in my local browser so I'm just saving it twice in different places just to, to make sure in case I don't lose it uh, in, in, on the cloud or somewhere else so if I run this program and I, and I move Al down into the uh, block or the black areas to the left or right you can see that once I hit the screen I buzz I can also cheat and move Al over near the final part and after I uh, get the level complete message I get my little clap so that just is, uh, works for one um, level though so we want to do this for several levels so the first thing I have to do is what happens to the stage though when the program begins so when the stage, uh, when the program begins, I want to make sure that I always start at level one. So when the green flag is clicked, the response to the stage is to go ahead and force that first level to be loaded. And then there's the other issue of what happens if I receive a next level. So sometimes you have to retype in the name of the broadcast message. Sometimes it may be existing already, but in this case I just retyped next dash level. And this is the message that is sent from the um, from the sprite, in this case my um, my, my stage is, is, is running through all the different costumes so whenever I receive the next level I run the next costume and we just saw the, the four costumes that are available and in this case if I reach the fourth costume so if, if the costume number is equal to four that means that we reach the final round and the game is kind of over at that point and we want to display um, play a separate sound and that's the yay sound so in this case I'm just checking to see if I've reached the fourth costume and at this point I'll go ahead and play the, the yay sound so um, if I run this now I can, can force my uh, big out and again hit the buzzer and then if he's clear over on to the um, next level I can, can cheat and go to the first level I can go to the second level and just to test this here I go to the third level and finally I can um, make it to the, the final level and the game is over so this is a, a good project um, that you can work with your students and I'm even saving it now out onto the cloud and sharing it and you can access this same uh, game I just created but uh, it would be a good uh, exercise for you to try this yourself before you do it with your students. So the solution's out there and shared and you'll have that available 
on the, on the unit but make sure you do try this and just don't give it to your students to look at and uh, so that's the, a, a good example you might want to start off the early phases of programming with your students by having them explore this maze game on their own you can give the maze resources to them and uh, walk walk through this with them and then ask them to try to create this game on their own and then kind of release their creativity and let them explore and they can create their own mazes they could uh, create uh, specialized types of um, obstacles and so on the trick here though is try to make sure that your students do not use this for the create PT because there would be, be too many variations of things that look very similar and um, there's a tendency for that to happen with the students but try to suggest that they do things other than variations of, of this maze game.